As we kick off this series, Believe, uh, I, I got a word for us today that I believe is going to bless us, and I'm excited to get it to you. So if you don't mind, we're going to start in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. A very familiar passage of scripture, but I want to unpack it a little bit differently today. And when you're there, say there. As a matter of fact, when you get there, stand to your feet. Let's do that. I'm going to work you today. Up, down, up, down. Man, this got crazy. I just sat down. He got me standing back up again. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. You're there, say there. You're not there, say wait on me. You don't got to be ashamed to say, wait on me. I heard you mumble it. Wait on me. Wait on me. We'll wait for you. I hear you back there. (laughs) Mark chapter 11, verse 23. It says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which they say it shall come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they say. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you shall receive them, and you shall have them. That's a powerful scripture, isn't it? Y'all mind if we read that one more time? For verily I say unto you that whosoever, everyone say whosoever. Whosoever. Let me tell you, you are whosoever. (laughs) It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what tax bracket you fall into. It doesn't matter what your background is. Come on, you are a whosoever. Look at what it says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe, everyone say believe, that those things which he said shall come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they said. Therefore I say unto you what things you soever desire. When you pray, believe that you will receive them and you shall have them. I want to talk to you for a moment from the subject matter, voice activated, voice activated, voice activated. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that it is rich and alive and well and moving and breathing. And God, we ask that your word would transform us from the inside out and that our lives would never be the same because we've had an encounter with you. In Jesus' name we pray. All those that agree, shout amen. Amen. And amen. You can take your seats. As you take your seats, shout voice activated. Voice activated. I I, I love this time of life that we are in. And I love that we get an opportunity to experience um, and discover some of humans' greatest inventions. We understand and know that all good things come from the Lord and he utilized vessels to create certain things. And I'm grateful uh, that he allows us to benefit from the labor and time spent that people have placed into creating things that are helpful. How many of you can agree with that? How many of you remember there was a day and time that we would have these big calendars that we were right down on. Some of us still got them, but now, you know, thank God, you can put your calendar right here in your phone. You know, it reminds you, send you a little notification. You're late. You need to be on time. Some of you you set your clock early in your car so that you still will be on time and you're still late, shame on you. Some of you set your clock this morning, I'm going to be 15 minutes early, 15 minutes late. My God, I'm going to pick on my wife a little bit right here because she don't got the mic. That girl, she set her clock. She wake up in the morning. I say, come on, baby, we got to go. She said, give me five more minutes. 
that five go turn into 20 real quick. But thank God for the gift of technology. I, I'm grateful for uh, this particular device because uh, I don't have to always touch it. It's got something on there, a little helper called Siri. How many of you heard of her before? Oh, man, Siri, she helped me out so much. She reminded me of stuff throughout the day. You got an appointment, 15 minutes. I said, all right, thank you, Siri. But in order for Siri to be activated, it requires my voice. In order for her to help me, it requires some action on my part. Let's see if I can wake her up real quick. Hey, Siri, how are you? Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Define believe. Define faith. Define Christianity. She won't do it because I have not continually activated it. See, I don't get a chance to benefit from the activation until I open my home screen. So once I open my home screen, And I call her, hey, Siri, Mm -hmm. define believe. An acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. A statement. Sure, let's do the remaining one. Trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. Trust, faith, or confidence in something or someone. I can't use voice activation on this device until I open it. Without me opening it, it will only work a portion of how it's supposed to work. In in order for it to work the way it's intended to work, it has to be open. In order for our faith to work the way God intended for it to work, we have to be open to allow God to use it. But it has to be activated through our faith. Are you listening to me? Let's go a little bit deeper. In order for my faith to be activated, I have to put my voice on it. Word of God says that it is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible for my faith to be active without my voice. My voice is the fingerprint that tells my faith where it belongs. Only I can open my phone. Only you can activate your voice to stir your faith. If you're writing notes, I just want you to write this down very quickly before we get into the meat of this. Believing is the attitude of faith. Believing is the attitude of faith. Believing is the attitude of faith. But speaking is the initial act of faith. Believing is the attitude of faith. If ever there was a time to have an attitude, it would be to believe in God. If ever there was a time to have an attitude about something, it would be to activate your faith by believing in God. God's greatest joy is to be believed in, and his greatest pain is to be doubted. The entire life of a believer is that of faith. In order for us to operate the way that God intends for us to operate, we have to be open. Everyone say open. And we have to use our voice. Everyone say voice. Recently, uh, neuroscientists and one of the leading neuroscientists uh, discovered that the strongest, most powerful way to rehab the brain was through voice activation. See, a portion of the body responds to stimuli. You know, when a person's in a coma, they may take something and rub the bottom of their foot. 
to see if there's a response or reaction. But only parts of the body respond to stimuli. The whole body responds to voice activation. The whole body responds and follows whatever the voice says. So when the mind tells the mouth to say, I am weak, the body will follow. Maybe that's why God says in Joel chapter 2, let the weak say, I am strong. Because he understands what you say, you will eventually see. See, everything that we desire in life is voice activated. That's why it's important what we believe we say. The enemy does not care what you believe as long as you don't say it. The enemy does not care what you think you're going to walk into as long as you don't say it. The enemy does not care what you have going on in your faith walk with Jesus Christ as long as you're not talking about it. But there's something supernatural and powerful that takes place when you activate your voice and you put your voice on your faith and it ignites something supernatural and you begin to see what it is that God is saying because you begin to say what it is that God is saying. See, when we repeat what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, we see See the things that he desires for us to see, but things remain the same when we remain silent. Let me go to another passage of scripture that's very familiar in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. It says, but what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess... Everyone say confess. With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So a huge part of this walk called Christianity is you not only believing in your heart, but confessing with your mouth that Jesus is not only your master, but he has the opportunity to be everyone else's master that believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth as well. There's something powerful about confession. Can we go a little bit deeper? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, we have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. How many believers do I have? And if you're not there yet, don't worry. We'll give you an opportunity. But it says, I believe, therefore I speak. This is convicting because you can tell what you really believe by how much you speak about it. You can tell where your alliance really lies by how much you speak about it. In praise, in worship, you can tell if the core of what you believe is based around Jesus or based around circumstances. Right? Because when things are going good, you don't mind singing about it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. But when circumstances and situations aren't going the way that you plan, you're silent. Listen to me. Voice activation is not situational. It's what you believe. And today, you have to do personal inventory to see if what you believe is grounded and has a foundation in Jesus or if it's grounded and has a foundation in what you want. This is why the Jesus that you see is the Jesus that you get. If your Jesus is limited to your situation, of course you're not going to lift up your hands and praise him when things aren't going the way you want it to. 
If your Jesus is limited to your circumstances and what's going on around you, of course you can't say that he's good because the things that are happening to you are not good. Therefore, how could he be good? The Jesus you see is the Jesus you get. So it's important that we take the blinders off of our eyes and see Jesus for who he is. You all have heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. Oftentimes, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. When things are going wrong in our life, everything is going wrong in our life. When we are in the middle of a test, we assume everyone is in the middle of a test. When we are in the middle of chaos, we assume everyone is in chaos. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. And if we can get our sight right, we can get what we say right. And if you can get what you say right, you can get your life right. How many people want to get their life right? I mean, you just have your mind made up. I am not going to settle for what it is I see. I believe God has more for me, so I have to say. Voice activation. Isn't it crazy how when you go to the doctor for almost anything, the first thing they tell you to do is stick your tongue out? Ah. So, Doc, my knee hurt. I, I came in here because my knee hurt. Stick your tongue out. In every single situation of this journey of faith, when we return back to God, he always says, stick your tongue out. Let me see what you're saying. Because if I can change what you're saying, I can change what you're seeing. Are you listening to me? This journey of faith operates off of what we see because what we see frames what we say and what we say frames what we see. In order for me to see differently, I have to say differently. But in order for me to say differently, I have to first see in the spirit what is not yet made possible in the natural. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. I want to read this to you again before I start giving you some nuggets. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and, and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which they said shall come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe and you shall receive them. Which leads me to point number one. Point number one is this. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it will not be strong enough to move your mountain. Are you listening to me? If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, if you cannot release out of you what God has placed on the inside of you, then your faith will not be strong enough to move your mountain. How many of you got some mountains you need moved? Three people. Okay, that's the three people I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking online today. But I believe I'm standing in a place where there's some people that have things that need to be moved. There's some season that you're praying that God closes and some season that you're praying that God opens. And guess what? It's only activated through your voice. See, your faith knows your voice and your faith will follow what your voice says because it's voice activated. But the only way that your faith can be activated by your voice is you have to be open to being used by God. And I wonder am I talking to anybody that understands if my faith is not strong enough to move my mouth, it surely won't be strong enough to move my mountain. Your faith has to be strong enough to move your mouth in order for it to be strong enough to move your mountain. Mark chapter 11, verse 23, we see Jesus say the same thing, but he's using three different Greek words. When he first says, say, he's talking about the Greek word epo, which means to command like a general. As a believer, you have the authority and the ability to command your words and send them to the place that you need them to be. 
He says, say to the mountain, which means command to your mountain. Utilize the authority that God has given you to tell that thing what you want it to do and expect it to happen in faith. He says the same thing three different ways, utilizing three different words. Say, epo. The second word that he utilizes is saith, which means leleo which means to use your voice. You have to utilize your voice to activate your faith. What I'm doing right now is I'm stirring your faith, but only you can activate it. My voice may stir your faith, but your voice activates it. See, not only do you command your faith, but you have to activate your faith. You have to own your faith. You have to grow your faith. And those things are grown through your voice. It's okay to hear someone else tell you what you should do, but it's something supernatural about hearing yourself stir yourself and moving your faith from one place to the next. And I want is there anybody that understands my voice is powerful, my words have power, and my faith is activated when I use my words? And the third version of this, he says, say, saith, and saith again. And the third word is a very familiar word that we use called Legos. That store that you take your kids and your grandkids to. <laughs> Legos. Do you ever see the box of Legos? And the box is so well put together, you think to yourself, this is going to be easy. Everything I need is in this box. You open the box, a million pieces fall out. And your kid looking at you like, I can't wait for you to put this together. <laughs> and you thinking to yourself, I'm not going to put this together. Legos. And what this Greek word means is God gives you the pieces for your future. We look at these Legos and, man, they're just all over the place. My son saw me taking his... Lego set apart this morning, he almost had a panic attack. He started asking me questions like the tax collector. When can I expect it back? When I get home, son. Well, what are you doing with it? I said, I'm using it to build something. Well, what are you building? You have to watch service and see. But God gives us these pieces, and our words put them together. And the more we utilize our words to activate our faith, the more it begins to frame our world. See, this word Lego means pieces for a frame. And when we stir our faith by activating our words, the pieces begin to come together. And what looked like it didn't make sense before begins to take shape. What looked like it was impossible to bring together before begins to look very possible when we utilize our words to activate it. And before, this was just a bunch of little pieces in that little box. But because I put it together, now it's a nice little frame for this little Lego man right here. <laughs> See, our words frame our destiny. I know it doesn't make sense utilizing this little Lego set but I got some help. Can I get those, those that I've asked to help me real quick? Just real quick, real quick. We won't take long demonstrating this. But I want to show you what our words do. When we activate our faith by activating our words, we take our words and it begins to frame up our future. Our frame of perspective is always put in place by the words that we have. And so when we begin to say things like, God, I believe, therefore I will receive. 
You can stretch your hand out right there, grab her hand. Look at that, look at here, look at here. We're going to move some pieces around. Grab her hand, Pastor Anderson. Come on up here, Ryan. Look at this. And it makes a frame. And you know what happens to me when I frame my world with my words? I get boxed into it. And I have a boundary set around me. So the things that are disturbing on the outside can't get inside of my frame because I've positioned my faith to frame my world that's been activated by my faith. And guess what happens? When I get down, the words of faith that I've covered cover me so things on the outside can't come on the inside. I can bump up against it and it keeps me protected. It keeps me safe. And the best thing about it, no matter what's going on around me, the enemy can't get in because I'm framed by faith. Is there anybody that's willing to utilize your voice to activate your faith, to frame your world, to see what it is that God has for you? to see. Come on, can y'all give my help a round of applause? Thank y'all so much. I'm going to put that right there so y'all don't forget how to frame your faith. Point number two is this. Your problem is any size your faith wants it to be. Are you listening to me? Your problem is any size your faith wants it to be. You say, what do you mean by that? When Jesus is saying, you say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be removed. You say, well, well, how is that even possible? How can I remove a mountain with my words? Because words made that mountain. The reason we can utilize our words to move the mountain is because words made the mountain. Let me take you to Scripture so you can see what Scripture says. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. This helps us to understand that my words have power, my words have significance, and everything that I desire to see in this life is voice activated. God says, utilize your words to move the mountain. He understands it was words that made the mountain. So in order for the mountain to change or to move, I have to utilize my voice. The enemy wants you to remain silent to steal your power. When you can open up your mouth, even when you don't feel like it, and say, God, I still believe that you are good. Guess what happens? Not only does your situation change, but you begin to change. You begin to actually believe what it is that you're saying because your voice activated your faith. Your problem is any size your faith wants it to be. In order for you to see differently, you have to begin to say differently. Your words frame your world. So not only does God give you authority to speak, He wants you to speak using your audible voice so that you can frame your world, so that you can let go your world, utilizing the pieces that he's given you. Guess what? God doesn't give you a box with the picture on it, and you open the box, and the things that come out of it are just like the box, but he gives you a box with the ingredients to put together the thing that's on the cover of the box, but you have to utilize your words to frame it up. See, isn't it interesting that when you go to the store and you buy cake mix, you don't open the box and a cake comes out, but when you open the box, there's certain ingredients that come out of the box that will determine how this thing comes together. There's some things that you have to add that you may already have. There's some flour. There's some eggs. There's some, there's some butter. There, there's these different things that you have to add to the ingredients for it to become what's on the box. And I'm telling you, although God has shown you a picture of what it is that he desires for you, although he's given you the ingredients, although he's given you the pieces, you have to frame what it is that he showed you with your words. See, each word has the power and the ability to change trajectories and seasons and places and times. And God is saying to you right now, can you put your voice on 
what it is that you're believing me for. The third and final thing is this. You are no better than the thoughts you think. You're no better than the thoughts that you think. So if you're not seeing right, you have to go back to the foundation of what you think. You will only advance in life to the image you have of yourself advancing in life. Whatsoever a person thinketh, so are they. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, I believe, therefore I speak. You are no better than what you think. I believe God has given us an opportunity to press reset because what the last season has tried to do was steal our belief and deactivate our faith by silencing our voice. And I'm telling you, there's too much in you for you to remain silent. The only way you can be delayed from entering into the season of life that God desires for you to walk into is if you remain silent. And so I just want to stir your faith. I want you to think about the areas of your life that you've been silent in. Maybe it's an area that you've forgotten about or possibly have tried to hide from those that are around you. That's where your voice needs to be activated. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. take this opportunity to reset, refocus. If you know that you need your voice activated again, I just want you to slip those hands up. I don't know what may have happened in life. I don't know what has happened to you in the last season that has tried to steal your voice, but today you're going to get your voice back. Today, you're going to get your authority back. Today, your faith is going to grow in Jesus. So I want everyone to repeat this after me, Lord Jesus. I repent from sin. And I repent from not believing the way you desire for me to believe. Thank you, God, for opportunities like this that help me to frame my world and see things differently than they are so that I can be who you want me to be. I press reset and I ask God that you would wipe away my sin and cast it as far as the east is from the west. In Jesus' name. 